Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss the topic evolution of sporophytes in bryophytes. Now, before entering into this actual topic, that is evolution of sporophytes in bryophytes, let us first of all see what is actually known by the term sporogonium. The sporophyte or the sporogonium in bryophytes, it is none other than the sporophytic structure that is developed in the bryophytic plants. Like in this example, in this picture, you are viewing the capsule in the bryophytic plant called rickshia. So this is a capsule of rickshia, which is enclosing a large mass of fertile tissues and this capsule is without any sita or foot-like structure, which are the sterile tissues normally present in other genera among the bryophytic plants. The sporogonium or the sporophyte, it is a very delicate structure. It is very short-lived and also it is nutritionally dependent on the gametophytic structure in bryophytic plants. Now let us see what do we actually mean by the topic evolution of sporophytes? To explain this entire process, there are two different theories and they are contrasting to one another. The first theory is called the theory of progressive evolution and the second one is called the theory of regressive evolution. Now let us discuss these two theories one by one. According to this theory of progressive evolution, the evolution of sporophyte in bryophytes has taken place from rickshia. The rickshia is considered as the most simplest sporophytic structure, which is having potential fertile tissues compared to the other advanced bryophytic plants like funeria, sphagnum, etc. according to this theory of progressive evolution. Now this theory of progressive evolution, it can be discussed within eight different stages. The first stage is represented by the genus Rickshia, which is the simplest known sporophytic structure among the various bryophytic plants. This picture, as I have already discussed with you, that it is only having the fertile mass of tissues, which is enclosed by this single layered jacket without any food or sita like sterile structures. So it represents the first stage in the process of progressive sterilization in bryophytic sporophyte evolution process. The second stage, it is represented by the genus Corsinia, which belongs to the Hepaticopsida class. But here, in addition to the capsule, a small sterile foot also develops. The capsule has a single layered jacket shells. Some sporogenous shells are also present. And here, sterile nutritive shells are also present. In the third stage, which is represented by the genus Spherocarpus, you can see here, this is the picture of Spherocarpus genus. The food and seta are present in addition to the other sterile tissues like second layers, sterile cells, etc. Fourth stage is represented by the genus Tarsionia, where food, seta, and sterile heart capsule is present. Fifth stage can be seen in the genus Markensia. In case of Markensia, we can see broad food, a massive sheta, capsule layer, that is a jacket, single layer jacket, sterile apical capsules, then elaters with spiral thickenings. All this represents the sterile tissues present in the sporophyte in Markensia. This is, a, this is a picture which shows a comparative account of the sporophytes found in many bryophytic plants. The figure A represents rickshia, B for spherocarpus, C represents the genus Tarsonia, D Markensia, 
and this is pallia. Now, in this, it, this pixel clearly shows that the most simplest form of capsule is found in the genus Rixia, which is having all these fertile tissues which are enclosed within this single sterile jacket layer compared to the other four genera. Now, in case of Spherocarpus, Marchensia, or Spherocarpus, we can see lots of sterile tissues like food, seta, jacket layer, sterile narcils, then elators, elatophores, etc., etc. So all this represents the different forms of sterile tissues present in the capsule in the bryophytic plants. The sixth is, it can be seen in many jungle manuals like Pallia, Porella, Ricardia, etc. Now here the sporophyte is differentiated into food, seta, and capsule. And the capsule is also having a multi-layered jacket compared to the single layered jacket in case of Rixia or in Marchensia. Seven stage is represented by the genus Anthocerus within Anthoceratophyta. So here a special structure called columella is present in the sporophyte along with food and seta and other sterile tissues. The eight stage is represented by the higher members of Bryopsida class like Funeria polytrichum, etc. It is also called the final stage because it represents the highest degree of sterilization among the bryophytic plants. So here the sporophyte is differentiated into a food, a long seta is present along with a capsule. Then there are large number of sterile tissues present like apophysis, operculum, jacket layers, the columella, trabeculi, the parastum teeth, etc., etc. So this is a diagram which shows the sporophyte of Anthoceros, and here you can see the special structure known as the columella, which represent a special uh, sterile tissue which is found in this particular bryophytic genus that is Anthoceros. Now this is the alice of the capsule of Funeria. This is the Funeria plant and this is the sporogonium of Funeria. The alice of this particular you can see here in this particular diagram. And here you can see that the fertile tissues are enclosed by this large number of sterile tissues like columella, this jacket, multi-layered jacket cells, food, shita, etc. So finally, we can sum up that the sporophyte of Rixia, it is the simplest among the bryophytic plants, which is having a large proportion of fertile tissues and sterile tissues are very, very small compared to the other members of the class Bryopsida, which are considered to be the highly evolved, which are the complex, having complex sporophytes, but they are with high degree of sterility. So this is how the evolution of sporophytes in bryophytes has taken place due to progressive sterilization of fertile tissues from Rixia to Cunaria. Now this is the another theory called theory of regressive evolution. So according to this theory of regressive evolution, the simplest sporophyte of Rixia is considered as the most advanced type of sporophyte. And the complex sporophytic mosses like Funeria, Polytrichum, etc., they have been evolved by the process of simplification or progressive reduction or regressive evolution of the complex fertile tissues which are present in the simplest genera called Rixia. The various stages of this regressive evolution or progressive reduction of sporogenous tissues can be summed up like this. The semi-parasitic foliose sporophyte has gradually lost its leaves and the sporophyte has 
become embedded within the gametophytic tissue. There is a gradual reduction of the sporophytic tissues, photosynthetic tissues in the sporophytes. There is a restriction of stromata or it may be totally absent in few genera. The capsules of most of the mosses and other jungle manuals are multilayered, which have subsequently become multilayered in Rixia or in Markensia due to the process of progressive reduction. Now, along with these changes, there was also gradual elimination of sita and food from funeria as we move to Rixia. All these changes are accompanied by progressive increase in the fertility of the sporogenous shells. However, the evidences from comparative morphology and experimental genetics have shown that the simple sporophytobrixia is not an advanced structure as it was uh, provided by this progressive reduction or this reduction second theory, but it is a reduced structure. So this is about the evolution of sporophytic structure in the bryophytic plants according to these two theories of progressive evolution or the other one due to the various stages of productive, progressive reduction. So that's all for today's class. So thank you very much. So stay tuned for our next classes. Thank you.